So I wanted to do a quick footnote video on the process I used for converting dollar values from past dates to current dates in analysis of uh, launch costs um, that I've done in other presentations. So the basic process I wanted to go through is, um, it's like several steps. The first step is to um, find and download consumer price index data. Um, we're going to be putting this into Excel. Um, we need this because we're going to be applying this formula. We take the past amount in a spreadsheet and we divide it by uh, the consumer price index for a past date associated with that past amount. And then we multiply it by the consumer price index value for a present date. And that'll give us a present value of, of some past amount. Uh, second step in this process will be to find some names, to define some names for um, the ranges in this table, uh, both the, the main data set and also for the left column where the, the years are labeled. And then we're going to test that to show that it works uh, as a sort of a checkpoint. Next, we're going to create, um, or I've already created a, a table uh, in Excel that has some sample dates that will convert. And we're going to name a target date, like a global variable, basically, for um, converting all our dates to. So we have a common, common date for all our values after the conversion. Then we'll create a formula that will do the conversion, kind of like the formula I showed up top, but it's a little bit more complicated in Excel. I'll explain how that works. We'll verify the formula does what it's supposed to. And then we're going to create something called a named formula, which is a really cool feature of Excel that I don't think too many people know about, but it's a great way of creating a formula um, without using macros in VBA. All right, so let's get started. Uh, so first we want to find and download some consumer price index data. We're going to search for this term here, converting values to account for inflation. Uh, that's how I found it for in the first place. So let's go to Google and put the search term in and we get this CPI inflation calculator. So there's basically a cool little calculator on this page that tells us um, how to convert between two different sets of values. So we don't actually want to use this calculator. We want to get the data, which is down here in this, this data link. So we click down here and we see there's a nice graph showing the values for 2012 on to the present and a table. Now we want to get more years than this table is providing us right now. So we're going to go to this table selecting value here. Let's drop down and pick the earliest possible year, which is 1913. And then we have to click this little go icon and it creates a new fresh page and gives us consumer price index data all the way back to 1913 and a much larger table, which is what we're looking for. All right, now we click on this download link and it downloads the table. We can then open it. And give it a second. All right, so now it's opened this table and you can see all the years and months and the consumer price index values starting from January in 1913, going all the way down to, well, oh, not that far. It's a little jumpy. All right. Going down to 2022, and the latest that value looks like we've got is for June, which is pretty good. All right, so now we need to move this data into our other spreadsheet. So I'm just going to right click, actually first I have to enable editing, and then we'll right click on the tab at the bottom here and we'll move or copy this into our other spreadsheet. So this is the name of the current spreadsheet. We're just going to use this drop down box to move it into a spreadsheet that I created called ISS resupply launch costs. And we're going to create a copy and we're going to move it to the end. All right. And then when we do that, it appears now, it looks like the same, same tab, but it's actually in a new spreadsheet called ISS resupply launch costs. Uh, in its own tab. So we have the same data. Um, now this is good. This is my original draft spreadsheet over here. We need to now create some names um, for the ranges. So the first range is going to be the, the entire data set. So make sure that you're on this uh, first year, 2013, and just go and select all the months, but not the halves, and go down to the bottom and get all the way down to 2022. So now you've selected the entire range of consumer price index values. And we're going to go up here to the formulas tab and define a name for that. And it'll just be called CPI data. And you can see it refers to, and it's got the defined range down below. All right. 
Now, the second thing we want to do is we're going to scroll back up to the top um, and we're going to select the column labels or the row labels here. So we can go down and select all of those. And similarly, we go to formulas to find name up here. And this time we're going to call it CPI row labels. And click OK. So now we've created two new names. And you can see them in the name manager if you like. It should be CPI data and CPI row labels. All right, so next let's go to the original tab and let's just test that all that worked. So we basically can go here and type equals and then CPI and we can see the two names that come up or offered to us. The first is CPI data, so let's look, select that and see what happens. See, it, it actually populates the entire table into our, our spreadsheet. So that, is, that seems to be working. So I'll control Z to back out of that and we'll try it again with CPI uh, row labels and we double click on that hit enter and again we see we get all the rows um, showing up so this basically tells us that our named ranges are working all right let's go back to our our plan here our master plan uh, we've tested our names so now we're going to create a table well, i've already done this actually step four is create a table of dates and values that we want to do conversions on well that's this sort of draft table i've made here so i've created um, a date column, a payment column, and a payment converted to 2020 US dollars column. So I want to convert all these values, which are like $1 billion values, from the year that they were made into present day values. Now the present day value is called this target date, and I've put, I labeled it here target date, um, and given it a value of like June 2022. I'm actually going to take the space out of this, and show you a cool trick. We want to create a label for this as well. So what we'll do is select them both and click on this button, which is called Create from Selection. And it asks us which uh, part of this selected range we want to use. We're going to use the left column for our names, which is the target date, and click OK. And all this is done, it didn't seem to do anything, but what it did was it gave this cell a name that it made from this cell. And you can see up here in this box that it's got the name. Now you could have typed that name in directly yourself, but this is a kind of a quicker way of doing it, especially if you've got a lot of labels and values. So I find that's a pretty kind of useful, useful feature. So now we've labeled this value here. It's our current target date. And now we want to create a formula that goes here that will convert this value from this date to this date. So let's go back to our Word document. This is the formula that we're going to try to create. Now, this formula is very similar to the one above. We have the CPI present date over the CPI past date up here. Um, but what we're going to do is the um, explain the top half here. So the numerator is a function called index, and it's basically going to index into this table we named, we named CPI data using the row and column. Now the row is this part here. Uh, so to get the row, what, we, what we're doing is using another function called match. So match is a function that takes a string and looks it up in another range, which is a CPI row labels, and returns an index to how far, where, where in that range that string occurred. So we're going to, for example, give it a string that represents the date, um, and it's going to look up in our row labels, which is all the dates on the, on the left, that leftmost column and it's going to return an index for which one matched. Now the date string we're going to get by using the year function. So the year with the target date inside brackets returns the actual string for the year, like 2020 or something. Uh, the month we can just directly get, we don't need to do any lookup for that one because it's going to be a number from 1 to 12. So we look up the month with the month function from the target date. That'll give us a number from 1 to 12, and that's directly useful as our, our column selector. So as long as our, our table is sort of left line, so the index one is the first is January, we should be all set there. Um, the, numer the denominator is very similar. The only difference is that we've included a, a different reference for the, t instead of target date, we're giving it a, a, a cell reference, A7. Now, I've gone and created this same function down here. So I'll just copy it and we'll paste it in and see how well it works.
All right, so I've pasted it in, but right away we can see there's a small problem. The values I created in the original function were for a different rows, so we're just gonna change them to be B6. And over here, A6, A7 has become A6, and this A7 has to become A6. And now everything lines up. So now it's taking uh, the payment value, which is B6, and it's dividing by um, the consumer price index value that it's looking at from, actually divide is over here. So it's multiplying first by the consumer price index for the target date, which is this date, and then it'll divide out the consumer price index that it looked up for our original date, which is A6. And let's see how that works. All right, so we got a value. So it turns out that $1 billion in 2009 is the same as $1.4 billion today, which is great. Uh, but now we're going to do the last step, which is to create a named function. So a named function is really cool. All we need to do to do that um, is we copy the original formula here. Okay. And then while we're on the cell where that original formula existed, this is very important, we go and define a name for the cell. So this time we're going to call this name um, convert currency year, or let's call it date because we're doing month and day. All right, and then we scroll down to the refers to section and instead of putting it to the cell, we're going to paste in the formula for the cell, which I just copied from before. And we hit OK. Now we get the same result, but what's, and really nothing has changed, even the formula in the original cell has changed, but what we've done is created a, a named formula, which is kind of a cool thing in the background, and it's sort of tied to the cell location. But now we can go in here and type equals, and then convert uh, currency date, and you see it pops up there, right? And it will, I'll go back to formatting this, commas in. You can see it's actually converted it, and if we click on the currency date, it actually is now referring to, it's still referring to the original target date, because that's a named, a named cell. But for the, rep, the cells that were referenced, um, these are relative references, and so they moved along with our formula. So even though it's referring to this cell's formula, it's actually using the relative references, which is kind of cool. Note that we don't need to put any additional information in. We don't need to say like, you know, you sort of think you would want to like, say concern, convert currency date and then put some parameters in like this value and then this value and maybe this value last. Um, but you don't need to do that. Like this is not how the formula works. It's kind of getting that information from the original place where the formula was defined, which is up here. And interestingly, you can even now um, replace this formula with the uh, convert date, convert currency formula again. Oops, sorry. And it will still continue to work. And you can slow these down. So the only issue with this is that it's, you, know, you lose, you kind of lose track. If you don't, if you get what cell your formula was originally defined in and, and named in, then it is kind of tricky to um, edit the formula or anything like that. But the nice thing about it is that it doesn't use Excel's VBA macros to do the formula. The, using macros is probably a more rigorous uh, way to create formulas. However, sometimes when you give the spreadsheet to somebody else, um, they don't work because of security, con security concerns with macros. And also learning VBA and, and editing macros is kind of like a whole new skill for some people. So um, this might be a an easier way for some people, although I think there are some certainly some limitations and challenges with this approach. But at least it works when you pass a spreadsheet to somebody else, which is kind of nice. All right, well, that's all. I hope that helped. Take care.